my bank holiday Monday was a bit of a washout. I did that morning walk and thought, yes, Monday started well. I'm back on my feet, back to normal. And then my energy levels just crashed mid-morning. I did a lot of ad mini type stuff. I finished my car camping videos, so they're all, well, by the time you see this, they'll already be out, so you've seen all that now. And I put together some ideas for other things that I want to talk about. I need to do a video for my business channel because I'm really struggling to be enthusiastic about that at the moment. I've kind of turned it into a sleeping business because I found much easier, quicker and more profitable ways to make money in the middle of a cost of living crisis. I've decided to focus on those because that's where the money is and I have bills to pay like everyone else. And the business still ticks over. I've got loads of stock. I have the website. I still sell on Etsy, but I'm not really focused on it. I'm not pushing it. Um, and a lot of that is just the complete exhaustion that goes with it. I'm just, I don't want to do social media. So I have a problem there because I'm an online business. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. I'm going to make that my second half of the year job is to get back into that. I need to start promoting that again. I need to start uh, looking at other ways to promote it. But anyway, so that's something else. Um, yeah, so my energy levels completely crashed and I was going to go to my local cemetery in the afternoon and do those find a grave requests and I didn't. I didn't go, well I didn't go partly because I just felt so knackered and partly because it, the heavens opened and it just tipped down in the afternoon, um, even though it was warm. And I, I blame the energy levels on stupid lady hormones. It just, oh my god. Most of the time I'm fine, but every so often I'll get a crash. And it's probably not been helped by the car camping. Um, and they do say that the best way to deal with energy drops is to go and exercise. But when you're literally laying on the sofa and you can't move because you're so exhausted. I don't even know if I class it as real exhaustion. I can't tell. It's It's just a... You just can't move. You just like literally stare at the walls. And my sleep's been a bit weird the last few days, so I think I'm rolling into an, a new temporary... I tend to go through phases, so I'll have phases where I'll get more headaches, or I'll be really tired, or my sleep will change, and then it'll all settle back down again. So I think it's just all to do with hormone levels. So my sleep's been a bit odd lately. I went through a phase where I was going to bed earlier and waking up a lot earlier, but I was fine. Now I'm going into a phase of, I'm tired in the evening, I'm sleeping quite well, I'm waking up really early and then I'm falling asleep again and then I just can't wake up. So I've had some really bad mornings of, you know, getting up after 7.30 and I think it was Sunday morning when I woke up at 8.30. I don't know, it was the fright, uh, it was the Saturday morning, it was the morning after I got back from car camping and that's unheard of for me. So I think I'm going through a little bit of a phase of struggling with energy levels, so I just need to roll my way through that. Anyway, so it's now Tuesday morning, it's back to normal. The weather has definitely gone off, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be cold and the temperature is still going to be climbing at least a degree every day. So it's going to be warm and that's fine. Warm is better than sunny in some respects, because at least I don't have to wear loads of layers and I'm not cold when I'm working at home. I've got jobs to do this morning. I need to go out to the post office. I need to post a birthday card for my niece, who is four in a couple of weeks. My youngest niece. She'll be starting school in September. It's crazy. It's gone so fast. Anyway, so that's the beginning of this roundup. Um, yeah, just lots of little bits and pieces to do this week. So you can follow me around on some of that. Speak to you soon. Bye. I feel like if I let it, this year could become really, really expensive. I need new walking boots. I need new trainers. Um, while I was away doing my car camping in Keswick, I noticed that, I mean, I've always kind of noticed it, this 
phone that I use as my vlogging camera is my old mobile phone that I had to change because all my mobile banking apps um, obsoleted my model. This is a Samsung Galaxy J3. So it's a 2016 model. I stopped using it in, I think it was the end of 2019 um, and got my next one. My next, um, I have a, an S7, that's Galaxy S7 is my next phone and the camera on it is so much better but it's my phone and I wanted a separate um, like a separate camera that I could use just for recording so I wasn't always pulling out my old my original phone I might drop it I might lose it I bought a new memory card because they have memory slots in the J in these um, the, the Samsung Galaxies the older models so I have a great big 128 gigabyte memory in this so that means I can record loads and loads of stuff but it can be a little bit glitchy a couple of times I've had videos corrupted and the main problem there is that when I have the the camera that's on the other side so the, the the facing out camera so the one that's on the opposite side to the screen when I have that set to the full size sometimes the videos get jumpy and, and get corrupted so I have to use the narrower screen for that side and that's why some of the videos look narrower than the others so I have to do that otherwise I can end up losing material or end up just with glitchy videos but there were two occasions where while I was away when I was reviewing the footage when I got back where I noticed that the sound wasn't there it wasn't a problem they weren't talking videos I was just recording the scenery and I could pick up sound from other videos in the same place at the same time like it was mostly like bird singing in the woodlands and things like that so I could just overlay the sound and um, save that but so that's a new thing I've not seen that before and realistically I need I know I need a better camera I know the quality on this isn't great that's part of the joy of my channel is that I'm just a point and shoot we don't worry about things like that but I don't want this to become unreliable at the point where I have to replace my actual mobile phone now I've been using that since 2019 so the end of 2019 2020 so that's going to become a thing fairly soon I think I've already got one app that no longer works on my phone model so at some point I'm going to have to replace that and when that happens I can then use that phone as my new um, recording camera and I'll get much better quality out of that so that will be good and I can change over the memory and do that so that will be not a waste of money but for now I'm hanging in there I also I think I want the to get the mattress for my car to make the sleeping situation a bit more manageable um, I could carry on as I am but but I've looked at the mattresses and it's like you're paying minimum 40 quid for something that I might only use twice a year or once a year if I'm really busy doing other things. So I'm not even feeling like that's a good thing. Um, yeah, so there's all these things that if I had the money I would go and buy. I need, I do really need new walking boots. I want waterproof ones so I really want leather ones. Um, but I can't afford those. I need new trainers and I've always bought all my shoes like that. I, I try to buy good brands but I buy them second hand on like eBay and Vinted. But I'm trying to keep trying to keep things uh, in check this year. But I'm not sure that my walking boots are going to manage another year. I do have another pair which are below ankle ones, so the ones I use at the moment, my above ankle, and I have a below ankle pair which have lots of life left in them. I don't like them as much, but I will use them uh, so I'm not desperate. But anyway, so I'm trying not to spend money on things that they're kind of needs but kind of wants because I could muddle along without all of those things but they would make life easier. Anyway, so that's me trying not to spend money in May.
I'm putting together a video at the moment about all the things I eat in an average week. And the overriding thing that I've seen about it is how much repetition there is in my diet. Which is fine. I mean, I knew I had quite a basic routine. And this relates to something that I'm doing at the moment, which is I'm going to chop up and blanch that second bag of carrots that I just bought because I have way too many carrots. There's no way I'm going to eat all these before they start to go off. And for me, a lot of it is about not wasting food. So I'm blanching these carrots because I've overbought on carrots, but I know that I will need to use carrots. And wasting food is an absolute no-no in this house. We do not waste anything. It's my money I've spent. Why would I stick it straight in the bin? And that's what I've noticed on the repetition on this video that I've been putting together, which is there will be whole days where I eat the same thing. So I've also talked about how I'm trying to cut down on the snacks I eat by making a slightly bigger lunch, which is my healthiest meal of the day, and then eating it in sections throughout the day. So when I get the urge to snack, I'll have a bit of that lunch. And because most of my lunches are one pan meals, it's a lot of vegetables, it's much healthier. I should be snacking on that rather than packets of crisps, chocolate, peanut butter on bagels, which you will see a lot of as well. So when I buy something and it's there, I will keep eating it until it's gone because I don't want to waste it. I don't want it to end up in the bin. And where possible, I will freeze a lot of things, uh, like a pack of bagels I will put in the freezer and I only take out one every so often. With overbought veg, most of it can be blanched. And that's what I'm doing today so that I will have carrot to last probably a month in the freezer, I'll take it out as I need it, stick it in the pan, voila. And now I don't have to think about buying carrots for a while. And there's been a lot of carrots recently, but that probably means that, you know, over the next couple of months, there aren't going to be a lot of carrots. It's the same thing with the broccoli. I love broccoli. I like to have a lot of broccoli, but I tend to buy a lot of it when I see it available, because then you might not see any for months. And if I've got it in the freezer and I have about five um, bunches of broccoli in the freezer at the moment, when I want some broccoli, I can take a bit of broccoli out and it will keep. So that's why there's quite a lot of repetition of types of food and meals in that video that I'm making. Um, and I will say a few things about that at the end because I'm still putting it together and thinking wow well, look at my weekly my weekly eats because <laughs> I kind of knew but when you actually see it and you're taking pictures of it and then you look at it meal by meal snack by snack you think mm, okay so this morning's job is just sorting out these carrots so that they don't go to waste because the supermarkets do like to get us to overbuy. I think probably in the hope that A, it means that they don't have to deal with the overspill, where they've overstocked the shelves because people aren't buying stuff. And also it means that when it goes off and you throw it away, you'll just come back and buy it again. It's a retail tactic, multi-buyers. So, that's my carrots. There's quite a lot there, it's quite a big saucepan. So I'm going to fill this with water. I'm going, and when it reach, reaches boiling point, I'm going to let it boil for a few minutes. And then I shall rapid cool these by plunging them into cold water in my, um, in my kitchen sink. And then once they're cool, I shall bag them and stick them in the freezer. And that's it. So there we are. That's another job done. That's another month of carrots I don't have to worry about trying to find. Brilliant.
weather today is absolutely glorious. I said I was going to come to do some grave lookups that I've had through on Find a Grave. And in fact, there were about seven or eight of them. There were loads. So, um, so I've done those. Took advantage of the fabulous weather. Got some steps in. And I'm just going to sit down and enjoy nature. I've seen a lot of graveyards recently. But they're such peaceful places. And they're really good for nature. They're the best place to come if you want to get away from people and just enjoy nature because nobody comes here except people that are here for the graves so you don't see that many people so I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the warmth and not the plains catching back I missed the flowers on the magnolia tree in the cemetery, which is a shame, but I thought I probably would. At least it's looking happy and healthy. Another Wednesday, another clean. One of the things you notice when you work from home is you start to get used to other people's routines around you. So all my neighbours, their routines don't change very much. Uh, the people underneath me do two different jobs. He's quite erratic, his hours change all the time. She generally works from home but occasionally like once a week we'll go into the office and be out all day most of the time she's at home you can hear her talking I think she has like a, a phone type job um, the other two have fairly regular hours and you see them go out in their cars and come back at the same time every day and all that sort of thing but you do start to notice changes so one of the changes is that one of the buildings down the road from me has been an empty flat for a while and someone's moved in but I started to notice a change in road traffic which I know probably sounds really weird and I know that I probably sound like one of those twitchy neck curtain people and I suppose I am and I've only seen this woman once she doesn't have any like wheelie bins like everyone else does and she started sneaking all her rubbish into other people's bins the night before bin day when people put the bins out and one of the neighbours caught her and pulled her off about it so I know what she looks like but she has a constant stream of visitors and they're all men of a certain age and they all arrive they stay less than an hour they're gone 20 minutes later another one arrives make of that what you will but it's like okay that's interesting the other thing that's changed and I don't know if it's something that's going on or not is my neighbors who live underneath me so the one where she mostly works from home and it's been quite quiet recently they have fairly regular routines so um, every evening without fail at about four o'clock a bunch of their mates would turn up 
and they drink and smoke weed every evening. A lot of going in and out and in and out and in and out because you like smoking the buildings. And I noticed a few weeks ago it stopped and then she was away for two weeks going down to her family. Which is unusual because whenever they've gone away before they both go. So her family lives a long way away, even further than mine. And his family are local. And so she went for two weeks and it was very, very quiet here. Nobody really came round, there'd be the odd person. And then she's been back just over a week. And no one's been round. And all the going outside to smoke and all that sort of stuff has stopped. There's very little noise and then I haven't seen or heard from him very much lately and I thought oh he's, he's doing early and late shifts you know not hearing them um, and then yesterday I mean I'm guessing he must have been at home yesterday his dad came round with the car and loaded the car up with a load of boxes and then he left with his dad and as he left he went to get, go, get in the car he looked back at the windows and the front door of his place and he looked like he looked like someone had told him that his dog had died so I don't know if they've split up it's been really weird how much the routine has changed something's happened maybe I'm wrong maybe you know routines just change but he hasn't been back since yesterday so I'm hoping they don't move out I hate it when people move because you just get you get used to the way things are you get used to the way the predictability of your neighbours and even if they're a bit annoying or they make a bit of noise or whatever at least you can trust that you know what's happening when neighbours change and suddenly you've got new people move in and the routines change and the routines aren't good I've had some really really noisy neighbours neighbours that fight a lot um, currently we have neighbours that this guy just I don't know he's got into upgrading white transit vans into camper vans and he'll be out there to 11 o'clock at night fixing um, grinding the metal like he's cutting the metal with a with a with an angle grinder kind of thing and the people over the back who he's backed onto must drive them insane so we had put up with that for most of the last six years actually because they moved in quite soon after me but it's predictable, you know what's going to happen, you know how noisy it's going to be, you know what's going on. So I hate it when neighbours move and you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Are you going to get a noisy one? Are you going to get an antisocial one? Are you going to get a, a quiet one? It's, um, we get quite, quite a lot of moving because these are all rental properties around me. It's quite transient, people move on quite a lot. And I'm the longest standing person now in my block. Um, we tend to be a stepping stone because they're small properties and they don't offer a lot of freedom. Um, so yeah, so maybe changes afoot. I'll uh, I'll keep you posted on that one. <laughs> yes, I am the twitchy neck curtain person. Do you know what? I don't mind that. I mean, a lot of a lot of the people around where I live probably just don't care what goes on outside their front door. And that's the problem with the way community has changed, is that people don't, you know, that they don't have any input into their community. They don't try and uphold any standards. They don't try to look after the local streets. They don't care. They wouldn't care less if someone was smashing the wall down over the road. They just maybe look at it, maybe they wouldn't. It's like nobody bothers to look outside their doors unless they're physically going out. 
and I think it's a shame that we don't like uphold any kind of standards anymore and I think a lot of that is because people are so transient because renting means people are always moving around and people just don't care about where they live they're living there because it's a building not because they want to be there so and I think that's part of the problem I don't want to live somewhere where you know the neighbors are always fighting and there's drug dealing outside my front door who wants to live like that but you know half my neighbors are smoking weed so that probably suits them very well it's their drug dealer probably and you see lots of uh, like home deliveries of, of cannabis and stuff and it goes on you know all over the place and it's become like a standard thing now it's practically on delivery so I don't know it's uh, it's just a weird the world's a bit weird. So I'm on my way to my Wednesday clean and I'm always like, oh, Wednesday clean, God. But it goes really fast, it's three hours. So I'm gonna go and do that and then I'm gonna quickly nip to Tesco because a couple of freebies and discounts have come up on some of my cashback apps and I have three Tesco gift cards to blow. I haven't seen anything worth buying in Tesco for about two months now. But I hang on to the gift cards that I get paid for for doing certain surveys um, because then I can convert the gift cards back into cash. So the gift cards are free money anyway. But if I then buy something that's got a cash back on it, like something that's a pound, and I spend a pound on a gift card, and the cash back is a pound, I've turned a pound of that gift card back into cash that goes back into my bank account. And again, that's another reason why my food bills are so low, is because I effectively got an item for free and I put the money back into the bank, so it then becomes an income. So that's why another reason why my food bill was so incredibly low last year, is because I had so many cash backs where I was using gift cards and converting them back into cash, cash back sites bit of a wheeze. But there aren't so many this year. I've noticed that the retailers seem to be holding back on offering food freebies on the cashback sites and I think that uh, I think that things are getting quite tight for a lot of retailers. I read the other day that um, apparently even Places like McDonald's, McDonald's are starting to struggle apparently. And if McDonald's are struggling, then it must be bad. Because they're the first to take advantage of a, of a financial crisis with their, their cheap food. But yeah, so... Oh, parking here is a bit of a joke. I'm going to have to go all the way up the road again. Never mind. Near the main. Yeah, so whether whether McDonald's is a good gauge, I don't know. I mean, that's, I guess, when people are feeling the pinch, they go and buy cheap takeaways. I would have thought you'd cook your own food cheaply at home, but what do I know? Right, I've arrived. I'm five minutes early, so I'm just going to sit here and gather myself for five minutes. And... Speech in a bit. So Tuesday evenings Morrison's Hall and clean routine comes to you today from Wednesday. We've just had the back holiday Monday and I thought well instead of going in and cleaning after they'd only been back in the office one day, I'll move it on a day and then it'll still be two days. And then I won't clean again till the weekend as normal. Um, but of course, Wednesday I also do my daytime clean, so that's three hours during the day. So I did three hours, I've been back probably about three or four hours and then I've got out and done the evening clean, which isn't ideal really. It makes it quite a long day for me and it lumps all the cleans into one day and makes it a bit dull. But occasionally I change things around just to ramp things up a bit. 
and of course it means that I get to try Morrison's in the evening on a different day and see what happens. So, what did happen? Well, I have my bag here, so I obviously got stuff. Um, today has been pretty good. And I don't know if it's like this all the time, or it just happens to be this day. What I should probably do is do a week where I go to Morrison's every single evening and see what's there. Because I don't really know what all the other days are like. There was a time when I first started doing Yellow Sticker Halls where I was going like three or four times a week to see which days were best because I wasn't actually that sure. Um, but I've just settled into a routine of going first thing Sunday morning, Tuesday evening. It fits with when I'm over that direction anyway and it means that it stops me from doing too much shopping. That's the problem. If I go in every day and see great bargains, I'm just going to end up with a ton of food that I can't store and I can't use. So today was fun. The first thing I got was a freebie. I've actually had a decent offer on one of my cashback apps, which is Checkout Smart. Pizza buns for free. So these were £2.75. Um, and I've got all the money back on that. So that's a free snack. Brilliant. What else have I got? More chopped mushrooms. These were £2 down to 50p. The weight on this is 800 grams. So that's like, I think, roughly twice the weight of a regular punnet. Um, I bought some of these a, a week or two ago and they, I used them all fine. I don't find it difficult to get through mushrooms because um, I do a lot of one pan meals so they work really well. What else did I get? Well, let's start with the naughty stuff. So, <laughs> there was so much cheese on offer in Morrison's. There was an entire shelf and they just thrown all the cheese on. So this is a Black Sticks Blue. This was £3.12 down to 78p. There were about four different types of cheese and there was just so much of it and I didn't want all of it. I just finished the cheddar that I bought from Sainsbury's and I thought I'm just going to buy one. Don't need like every kind of cheese. Maybe I should have bought a few more. But they're not actually that cheap. I mean 78p is okay. I can smell it through the packaging. I said I wasn't going to buy bread stuff and I bought garlic bread. These were £2 down to 50p, eight garlic bread slices, but they will freeze. So that's going to go into the freezer and I can use that gradually over a period of months. Mackerel again. I know, I still have loads of it in the freezer. I'm going to keep this one out. These were £2.9 down to 53p. Normally I see them down to 98p which is why I grabbed this and it's the only one. So it's uh, it's got a used by date two days ago. So they've left that on the shelf a while. That'll be fine. I'll leave it in the fridge for longer than that. So I'm going to keep that out and I'm going to use that over the next couple of days. That's fine. What else? Oh more meat. So we have the assorted meat selection which I've had before and no problem. So it's assorted cooked meat pieces and you get a nice selection. You get some ham, some chicken, there'll be some beef in there, maybe some pork. It's a nice little, it's great for just whacking in my one pound meals. This was two pounds 72 down to 68p. That was pretty good. We'll have that again. That will last well in the fridge. I went a bit mad. I'm a sucker for a pork pie. I love pork pie. Look at the size of this pork pie. Never ever see them this big at this price. So these were £3.50 and these are the pork and apple pies. Down to 88p. So I bought two. Oh dear. But look at them. They're huge and I love a pork pie. So that's snacks. They'll last for days as well. And the last thing I bought, I've had my eye on yellow sticker leeks for weeks, but they've not been good prices. They usually go down to about £1.06 or something. And two leeks for £1.06. These were £1.50, down to 38p. So I bought two. 
Now what I will do with these is I will put these into water, just stand the bottoms in water and not only will they stay green but they will actually start to grow again. So I'll stick them all in water in a, in a jug and then start using them from the top and as I chop down, um, leaving them in water, they will start to grow again. So these could last weeks and weeks. And that is the lot. Now, that lot cost me £8.26, but a £2.75 needs to come off straight away because it was the free cash back app deal. And as usual, up here I will put what the, re what the retail price was uh, and what I actually saved on the remaining items. Um, and then you'll get a a better idea of how much I saved. I think we had some pretty good savings today and I shall get on. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to put anything else on the end of this vlog. There may be some more. Watch this space and see what comes next. See ya!